All right, we're trying to do this integral by using a trigonometric substitution. And a key point here is that to simplify inside the square root, I need to have a variable thing squared plus a constant. And unfortunately, I have this linear term messing with me. And that's why completing the square becomes necessary. So let's see if we can quickly complete the square on this thing. And then we'll try to pick a useful substitution. Um, so the whole point of completing the square is to get all the variable pieces in a quadratic trinomial taken care of with a squared binomial. So I'm trying to find what binomial do I square to give me x squared minus 6x plus other stuff. And I don't care what the other stuff is because I can compensate for it later. And the way to do that is with a minus 3. When I multiply that binomial times itself, I get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So I just implicitly added 9 to this interior of the square root. So I better subtract 9 to make up for it. So that's what I mean by compensating for expressing this with a squared binomial. All right, now all my variable pieces are in a single squared thing. And it's starting to look a lot more like a trig identity. 18 minus 9 is 9, so there's that piece. Now I can replace x minus 3 with something that gives me a trig identity. So I'm, I'm thinking about, if I just make a thought bubble here, I'm thinking about this trig identity. Because I'm looking at something that's a variable thing squared plus a constant, one of the things you need to adjust for is that 9. So when I make my substitution, it's going to look like this. Let x minus 3 be equal to 3 tangent theta. All right, that guarantees when I square x minus 3, I'm going to end up with a 9 tangent squared, and then I can factor the 9 out of that square root. I also have to transform the differential. So dx is going to be 3 secant squared theta d theta. All right, let's rewrite the integral. And I've got 3 secant squared theta d theta over a square root of, when I square x minus 3, I get 9 tangent squared. And then add 9 to that. And we'll just clean things up a little bit as we go. When I factor a 9 out of a square root, I get a 3. But there's a 3 in the numerator. So all those constants cancel. And I end up with a tangent squared plus 1 inside that square root. So I've got a secant squared theta d theta in the numerator. In my square root, I have tangent squared plus 1, which is just secant squared. But then I square root it, so I get secant. And one factor of secant theta is going to cancel, leaving me with the integral of secant theta d theta, which is one that I just have memorized because the derivation is so horrible. And that's natural log absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. It would be nice if we were done at this point, but we have to sub back in terms of x. We can't leave it in terms of theta. So if I go back to my original substitution, that's right here, I can solve that for theta. So maybe I'll just put that down here. And when I solve for theta, I get the theta is the angle whose tangent is x minus 3 over 3. I just divided by 3 and then inverted the tangent function. And what that means is we need to find in our final answer the secant of the angle whose tangent is x minus 3 over 3. Now, the other term is easy. The tangent of the angle whose tangent is x minus 3 over 3. That's just x minus 3 over 3. But the one where I'm mixing up a trig function of an inverse trig function, I need to use a little triangle to figure out what that turns out to be. And in this triangle, I'm going to put theta right here. And theta is the angle whose tangent is x minus 3 over 3. Okay, there's a picture of what that looks like. And you can verify the tangent of that angle is x minus 3 over 3. Now I'm going to need to get the secant of this thing, and the hypotenuse is involved in that. So I've got to figure out what is that hypotenuse. And using the Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus x minus 3 squared has got to be equal to this hypotenuse squared. So 
So I get the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs. Now the secant is 1 over the cosine function. And the cosine would be 3 over the hypotenuse. So the secant's going to be the hypotenuse over 3. So now I can rewrite my final answer as a natural log, absolute value. And now I have the secant of the angle whose tangent is x minus 3 over 3. And I just figured out that's going to be square root x minus 3 all squared plus 3 squared. I'll, I'll simplify that at the very end over 3 plus the tangent of that angle, which is just x minus 3 over 3 plus an arbitrary constant. And I want to do a couple things in just the final steps to clean things up. Well, each of these fractions inside the natural log has the same denominator, so I could just add them together. But the natural log of all of that stuff on top divided by 3 is the same as the natural log of all that stuff on top minus the natural log of 3. But I have an arbitrary constant floating around. So if I write natural log of 3 plus an arbitrary constant, that's just some other arbitrary constant. So that gets absorbed into the arbitrary constant, and it, it makes the answer look just a little bit nicer. The final thing I want to do is call back to the original problem and realize that what I'm looking at in the square root in my final answer is the same thing I had in my original denominator. That's just the complete the square form of it. I wrote, I wrote it in that form right here. And so I could put it back in that original form, which might be a nice way of just identifying with what the original integral was. And that seems like the nicest way to write the answer.